What's your, what's, what's your, uh, Nashville, where we are. That's Three, my shot. Three, two, one. We're rolling, Jim. You got anything you're uh, mad about or teed off about right off that you'd like to kind of get off your chest that no one's asked? Well, no one's asked me about the National Endowment for the Arts today, Jimmy. We're talking about doing away with that. Well, I don't know. There's a few things we could do away with before we do away with that, I suppose. Are they going to give you the I Love New York Award for this film, you think? I don't think so. But I live in New York. I, I think only New Yorkers will really appreciate this. They, they, they understand just how horrible it is there, and they, <laughs> they embrace it. Actually, it's getting worse, I think. I'm not sure, but I think it is. I don't know. The cab drivers, no one speaks English in the cabs now. I think that's completely been made against the law. That's true. But there are a lot of third world people who have left poverty and misery and repression to go back to their original land, finding New York to be just too damn hard. Now, what are the vagaries of filming in New York? I read that in the press kit. They said that apparently there are, you had to let a producer check into the vagaries of filming in New York. What does that mean? Vagaries? Yeah. Bob Green, huh? Uh, vagaries? The vague, well, there, on the street of New York, there are people who just lie there and beg for money, and they are called vagaries. Mm. And you've got to, everything's got to be cleared through And you them. didn't know that because you were a star, and you don't get out from those areas. Well, so I, I, take I, your producers wallowing in those things. No, no, I, I read the post. I know what's mm. going on. Uh, they're, they're, uh, the, the vagaries of shooting in New York uh, are there are 27 union lines and there you have to have so many donuts per hour. Um, you have, certain bridges and highways have to be closed, mandatory. President Bush has to come to town at least a couple times while you're shooting to completely paralyze everything. And Gorbachev, if possible. Try to get them both together. That's always fun. Yeah. And uh, there should be a fire station right down the street from wherever you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that you were one of the hard, you're like James Brown, you are one of the hardest working men in show business. Thank you, and, uh, I love you for saying that. Why did you want to direct something? That sounds like too much work. Because I wanted to jump by JB. Actually, I knew he was in jail. It was my chance for my for a move to number one. I figured if I directed, co-produced, co-directed. kind of co put you over the line with JB, kind of having him yeah. be held back a little bit. I figure on work release, he can't be getting that much that done. Much but uh, it was a big move. It was a big mistake. And frankly, the godfather of soul can take that number one position. Now, you're not going to go out and try to do the remake of Gone with the Wind or anything, no. right? No, I'm out. I'm out. I've, I've made my bones, and I'm going to quit now. I'm going to retire. Um, wasn't there somebody that had one success and quit? There must have been somebody. Uh, we'll look them up in our research. We'll look them up. Who, who did it and got out? If you were a movie critic, how would you... Uh, bring this movie on? I mean, what would you say about it? Yeah, I would say this is a movie that uh, nobody heard about two weeks ago. That's uh, uh, it's the Bill Murray it's movie. It's a nice, it's a Bill yeah. Murray movie, I guess. That sounds creepy. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but it's Bill Murray's in this movie and it's a, it's a change of pace from the rest of the action summer, I think. And uh, usually when you hear that, it's a bad movie, folks. It's a change of pace from everything else. It's, it's no good at all. Um, but this is actually a funny movie, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's a treat to watch. It I has think. the smallest did amount. Did you like it? I, I did like it. Out of turn. It has the smallest amount of shattered glass of any film that I've seen this summer. And you're not just saying that, are you? I'm not just saying that. It's only one scene of shattered glass, and you did have to do that. Yeah. yeah but every, it's, the, it's the obligatory shattered glass scene that we're seeing. Yeah. So. And you, and you use all cut. the primary colors, nobody too. Cut. And you use some and more. <laughs> uh, we used the 64 Crayola colors. Mm. So what we, we decided to go with a, a mixed keeping maze. Palette. You're keeping maize. Yeah, burnt sienna. We opened with burnt sienna and we moved to maize. It's, uh, it's the return of the uh, ideology of the American Indian. That's what we're going for. You know, I remember one time, it's been a long time ago, I was a small child. I saw you at the Kentucky Derby running around in a white suit. White suit? Some kind of white clothes. I don't know. Maybe you don't want to admit that. Maybe you don't even remember being there. Was it maybe just underwear or something? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Remember. It was white. Do you ever just get out and Diapers? hang out? Do you, do you expect people, I mean, they're going to know you anyway, but do people kind of bother you when you go out by yourself or when you walk down the streets or whatever? Well, Jimmy, there's some jerks out there. No kidding. It turns out. And if well, you're wearing a white suit, you kind of call them. And a white you're not doing suit, that you just say, hey, Travolta, right yeah. here. Yeah. No, the white suit gets you in a lot of trouble, and that's probably why I stopped wearing it. I don't know why Tom Wolf wears it, but I don't think people mess but with it. But you don't remember wearing this white suit at the Kentucky Derby? I don't remember anything about okay, the Derby. I just wanted to make sure. I'm not lying How about do you this. remember anything about I just the saw Derby. you, and I didn't say they anything. Hand you, I just saw you. I said, that's Bill Murray over there. They and hand you a drink at the airport, and they hand you, you know, hopefully they get you You were kind of stumbling around the stables, actually, is where you were. <laughs> Looking for a date, probably. <laughs> Who knows? 
But that's where uh, you were. Stumbling around the stables. That's where I saw you, man. God. Acquiring minds wanted The reports are still filtering in from years back. Right, we're talking about fame. Now, yeah, the people bother seen... you when you're walking around, you know, or just kind of in the airport or whatever. They all just can say, hey, Dr. Vinkman, or what do they say? Well, there's some goodwill out there. There's some goodwill out there for a movie. When people have seen movies and liked them, you end up with some goodwill. Mm -hmm. But I, and uh, the kids but that's nice. Them. The kids love us. Um, but I don't think, uh, you know, how many people do you know? The percentages don't change. There are so many nice people and so many that are strange. The percentages are pretty much the same. Sometimes uh, because, you know, they laughed at you in a movie, they let you slide. Mm -hmm. Some They will let you, okay, go ahead. But uh, it's, you know, I like people. They're funny. People are funny. And uh, even the ones that are annoying are amusing to me. So, you know, after the fact, often, but I, you know, when you, know, when you get out there, who knows what's going to happen. And the final question, I mean, do you have a future? Is there a future for you? I mean, what's next? Or is there going to be anything next? Or is there a future rather unclear? I see, I saw Jimmy gets cloudy now, damn it, four dollars. I don't have any idea about the future. Um, I, I'm supposed to work in the fall, but I probably won't. I'm trying It'll be to cooler get a, in the fall. I'm getting a doctor's note. I'm going to get out of it. Um, I don't uh, working is okay, but I really need more vacation time. I want to listen to a lot of records. I'm going to start a record collection. That's Do you like I'm country excited. music? By the way, I'm supposed to ask you that. What's your feeling on country music? Before we go, I'll get in trouble. Uh, well, there's a couple of people that I really am crazy about. You know, I'm just. I really like Roseanne Cash. I, I, I like her a lot. Um, I like Lyle Lovett. I, I think all the people that won this year at the Grammys are, are really, you know, the new people like Lyle Lovett and, and Katie Lang. So you're a closet and, fan? I like the Amazing Rhythm Aces. That was one of my all-time favorites. A closet? Closet country fan? Country? <laughs> I'm a closet American, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I'm closet country. In New York, they don't have, the country stations are they're kind of poppy, you know, I like the sort of off the ball stuff. I like the older, you know, Bill Monroe. I, there's a place near where I live where there are a lot of sort of acts that, you know, aren't big headliners, but like major kahunas like Bill Monroe or, you know, Nicolette Larson, somebody like that comes in. I like, I like the older stuff, Bob Wills. Well, we'll tell, let's tell Mr. Monroe hello you know, for yourself because he's watching this. He watches us. Oh, yeah? Okay. Well, I met Bill, but... Uh, 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 Two bills. He doesn't remember me. Bill, hi. We're leaving now. Good to see you. Goodbye. Say bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. okay.